Q&A, Q&A. Tammy's still doing other things, so we've got her making breakfast. So there we go. She did say to me though this morning, she said, have you seen the dog bowl? And I said, no, can he score over 250? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you're gonna take these on my subscribers and I do bad jokes. Okay, Christina Carey, in regards to line breeding and inbreeding, if we are DNA testing like we should do, wouldn't it eliminate the chance of having negative effects from double recessive genes? No. So remember, when you do a DNA test, you're testing for some very specific genes. Um, let's say, for instance, that you're doing a four panel, that would be the relevant thing. You're, you're check, testing for four particular genes that you, you, you're worried about. There's thousands of other genes that you can't test for that are uh, also relevant. So just because it comes back four panel clear does not mean that dog is now going to have puppies um, without any issues at all. It doesn't mean that at all. So the point here is, is that um, you know, recessive genes, there are, you and I both have lots of bad recessive genes lurking in our DNA profile that normally don't affect our offspring because we don't pair up with a person who also has those, mis those bad recessive genes. And so we don't get a double recessive pairing. So in those situations, it's not an issue. But, you, but, but the point here is, is that DNA testing is not going to eliminate all the possibilities of having problems, not even close. Um, of course, you know, the chances of having a problem with a recessive gene is relatively small anyway. You know, if two people have a double, each have one copy of a recessive, if they had two copies, they'd be suffering from the, from, from the problem. But let's say you have a flaw, a single copy somewhere uh, of a recessive gene that's a problem, and that other partner had it as well, then 25% of the offspring, one quarter, would be likely to suffer from that particular malady. So it's still not that great. But I mean, if you think of it this way, you know, how many times do people have really big problems when they have babies, uh, it, it, you know, human babies and the answer is I don't know what it is but you know one in 30 one in 20 five percent something like that you know but DNA we, we've through evolution we've got this bad stuff mostly pushed away into the background all right uh, somebody Laura Hughes says thank you so much for the information on the syringe pump and the protocol to prevent mastitis I guess that she got her fixed which is good uh, Okay, let's have a look here. Someone's got a long, 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 long thing here. Um, let's have a look real quick and see if we can see what they're asking about. Read more. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. So this person, Whitley Loveless, had a problem with two separate litters. Um, it looked like there was those sisters who had quite a few puppies that didn't make it for various reasons, heart problems, um, lung problems. And then the vet is saying, um, since four of 12 puppies have died from the litters, we've, that we should not breed the female again or the male again. I was wondering if you have any insight onto the situation. Okay, so the first thing is, the ones that had the um, pneumonia problem, that was not a genetic thing. That was a, a milk in inhalation thing. And those are things that you can sort out. So I don't know what treatment you use for those. Um, you know, you can tube feed if you have problems where the puppy's starting to show some signs of milk inhalation, but that's not, a, that's not a genetic thing. So I think two of the puppies died because they had um, um, inhalation, milk inhalation. Not genetic, that's not a reason not to breed. Now, the heart problem, it had one of them said it had a heart located mainly on the right-hand side, could not even be seen from a lateral view. So that one there, that possibly, you know, could be bad luck, it could be genetic. My advice to you would be this. If you're gonna breed those dogs again, do not breed them to the same male. That's it. And see what happens, that's it. Probably you're gonna be fine. Um, so remember, if it is, and we talked about this in the previous comment, if this is a genetic issue, the chances are if you breed to a different dog, those genetic uh, double recessive genes don't show up and you're okay. So I would definitely not breed any time do you have a really bad outcome and you decide you want to breed again, do not breed the same pair together. That's the simple answer on that. So I would breed again, but I would breed to a completely unrelated male and see whether or not this whole problem goes away. And be prepared 
for milk inhalation, look, we should all be prepared for this. And how do you get prepared for that? You have an incubator, you have oxygen, you have a feeding tube, you have antibiotics. Those are the four things that you do. And if you're going to do much of this, you should have that stuff on hand because when you need it, you need it now. And by the way, at My British Supply, we sell all of that stuff except for the antibiotics. And you can get the antibiotics if you go to, I've got a video on this, there are various antibiotics you can get over the counter that are designed for fish aquariums, but they're exactly the same thing. Like amoxicillin is something that's used a lot. You can buy fish mox. It's exactly the same thing. You could even take it yourself. Don't, I'm not advising you do that, by the way. So remember, not a vet. But at the same time, you know, you can get all of these things to handle these problems yourself. All right. Um, okay. Uh, my name is Kevin De La Rosario and something about color genes. I got my email results. Okay, well, let's just go over this one for them. So, so this dog, she wants to know, uh, she wants to know what the color this dog is. All right, so here's, the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the, let's see if, see if you can all work this out with me. The dog is Big E.M. Big E. So what is that? Big E.M. is one cop copy of black mask. So the dog is likely to show some degree of black mask. Big E means not cream. So it's not a cream dog. For the cocoa, it's NN. So this dog does not have cocoa chocolate. For the B locus, which is the testable chocolate, it's Big B, Big B. So this dog is not a chocolate dog in any form at all. For the D locus, which is the dilution locus, which we call blue, is little D, little D. It's a blue dog. The dog is KBKY, has one copy of brindle. So this is a blue brindle. Uh, A-Y-A-T, so this dog carries a copy of the tan points A-T, but it won't show it because it's brindle, and it won't show it because it's only got one copy. An A-Y-A-T dog will typically be stable if brindle's not present. So it won't be stable. Uh, big S, big S. So if this is, this is kind of confusing because different places have different ways of doing it, but if it's big S, big S, it means it doesn't have the, the, the pie gene. Uh, M locus, it says little m, little m. That doesn't sound like you've got that right because that means that is a double moral dog and that is not what you're talking about here. But if it was a little m, little m dog, then this is a moral dog and quite possibly a deaf dog too because it's got two copies of moral. So I would want to go more explanation of that as to know, as to know whether, that's the, whether this really is a moral dog. But I suspect it's not a moral dog and it should be written as big m, big m. So, you know, you say some things about this dog doesn't have brindle. Well, according to this, it does. So this would be, this would be basically a blue brindle is what this dog is. So there you go. Uh, someone says I'm funny. Good. I like being funny. Uh, Earl Ranch Aldis. I have a progesterone. My dog, my dog four times. Two days ago, she was a 3.9. Today, she's a 10.9. Okay. So... So in two days, she went from a 3.9 to a 10.9, not surprising. So let's call a 3.9 a four, a four the next day, you'd expect it to be a five. That's ovulation. The day after that, you'd expect it to almost double. So something around an eight, you've got a 10.9. She, Simu Shipton will be in the morning. I'm going TCI in the AM. Should I split it in two days or, or, or use it all? I'd use it all at one time with TCI. That's what I'd do with it. I don't like splitting semen. I think that uh, you're much better off putting the whole thing in the best time you think you can. I, I would stick the whole thing in and uh, not muck around with it. Someone's saying they were thankful for my video when we talked about the mucus plug. She was wondering what the discharge was. Yep, very common. Service reviewer. So you remove, we're talking about Duke Laws here. So you remove the, the back ones the same way. Yes, absolutely. Back ones are removed exactly the same way. So what age? Day four, day one. Something between day three and day five is the optimum time. You don't want to go past day seven because the, 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 the cartilage starts to calcify up and it will cause some distress. So remove this Duclaw. If you do it between day three and day five, it's very, very easy to do. And you'd be surprised that you'll hardly hear a peep out of the puppy and it won't bleed. If anything, just for a second or two, you can mop up with a paper towel. I mean, just by putting a little bit of pressure on it. Not blood gushing everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it's surprisingly untraumatic. Happy girl, new subscriber. Can you breed a merle to a brindle? Absolutely. She says, I know you can't breed a merle to a middle, but what about a brindle? I was, okay, she's got a blue brindle. I was told from the breeder it was a cryptic merle. The DNA I get from the breeder did not match my own DNA. Brindle lines didn't show up until about a month after bringing the dog home, which spurred me to get my own. 
And that, by the way, is very common. When people say, my dog's not brindle, and it was had a brindle parent, and they didn't do a test, then they don't know. Because this is the problem with brindle. It can show, typically, it doesn't show up when you can see it at birth. And typically, it might be five, six, seven, eight weeks old before it really starts to be visible. And then you can have dogs that are brindle that you can't hardly see it. You've got a, I mean, you know, they're a year old and you look at the dog and say, that's not a brindle dog, but in fact it is. And if you look carefully, you'll feel a little striation somewhere, a little banding somewhere, typically on their back end or on their flank. Anyway, she's got more to read here. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so this dog here, she's saying it's a cryptic merle. So can you, can, so the first thing is a, a merle to a brindle, no problem at all, not an issue. Um, of course, my answer would be is that I would choose a non-brindle dog as the male so that you can get other things showing up. But there's nothing um, health-wise that should stop you from breeding a merle to a brindle. It's done all the time with no problems whatsoever. Um, a cryptic merle to a merle, that is a little bit more sketchy, but it's not that sketchy. Supposedly, and I've never done this, but looking at the, 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 the scientific data on this, they say there's a 4% chance of problems with a cryptic merle to a merle. So, you know, one in 20, not that great. One in 25, not that great. Um, but then the question is, since they didn't know the DNA of this dog, how do they know it's a cryptic merle? And I suspect what they're thinking is, that they had a merle parent and they're expecting this dog to be merle when it wasn't and it's probably not a cryptic merle it probably just isn't a merle at all so that's what i think is kind of going on there but uh, dna would prove that so somebody else is agreeing with me michael hilbert that we should be doing dna testing otherwise you don't know what you're getting you're exactly right and oh, by the way on DNA, dna testing animal genetics is who we use they're quick Everybody else takes, so they're all about the same price. But animal genetics, you can, number one, you can order a swab kit online, it's free. Then when you get that, if the dog is more than six, seven weeks old, you can do a swab kit. Or you can simply cut a nail slightly short and bleed it onto a Q-tip and you don't have to have anything sent to you. And you can fill out, print out their paperwork online, include the Q-tip with a little bit of blood on it, and send that in and get DNA results about four or five days after they've received the sample. Nobody else is anywhere near that quick. I mean, it's people like Vet Gen, they're taking months. You know, you send a DNA sample in on a puppy, and by the time you've got the DNA back, the puppy's already left. So it's of little value at that point. So all about the same price, but I really like animal genetics. Um, they're good people, too. Um, not to say they can't get things wrong occasionally, but, but, you know, most of the time you should know a good idea about what you expect to get back on the DNA. So if something pops up that's ridiculous, you can then go back to them and say, look, this doesn't make any sense. Can you retest, please? Uh... Kelly's Frenchies, oh, she's talking about a platinum, and I said maybe it's an extreme pied, and she's saying, yeah, that's probably the case. Okay. Annette R. Hi, James and Tammy. What multivitamins do you recommend for a female Frenchie? Everyone talks about Revival Oxymama prenatal, but it contains TBHQ. I don't know what that is. Which one do you use? Thanks in advance. So this is what we do. Um, Actually, we are starting to have a line of products that we are going to offer, but I don't, I don't have those here yet to tell you specifically about them. But this is what I don't like about the Oxymama products. They don't have enough um, folic acid. Um, they have maybe 0.8 of a, uh, of a milligram, 800 micrograms. You should be giving five milligrams. That is like eight times as much. So what we do is this. We go buy on Amazon five milligram um, folic acid tablets that you can buy for, I think, $12 for two containers of, of, of a couple of hundred tablets in total, dirt cheap. We give that daily from the moment we breed until she whelps, we give her one of those tablets, and then we give her regular multivitamin on top of that. That's what we do. But, but I, I'm not saying that Oxymama is not okay. It probably is absolutely fine. I just don't think there's enough. Uh, and so the thing about folic acid is, is that folic acid has been proven to help reduce birth defects. We give it to humans these days. Human women, human women, as opposed to alien women. I don't know about alien women. I mean, I wonder what they get on other planets. Don't know about that and other, other galaxies. But here on Earth, we advise pregnant women to take folic acid to help prevent birth defects. And so as they are, and mammals like dogs, the whole thing goes down to dogs too. And there's been studies on this. And so the right thing to do, and it's dirt cheap and there's no downside, 
is to give five milligrams of folic acid, and it can certainly help things like cleft palates and possibly other birth defects too. All right, let's see how long we're, we're 50 minutes into this, I think we're about done here. And I think that's it, because the last one was about club feet, and I asked that last time. So there we go. There's 50 minutes of your time wasted. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. We appreciate it. Have a good one. See you. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.